I'm here with Dean of Harvard Business School, Nitin Noria, to talk about the U.S. Competitiveness Project. Dean Noria, thank you so much for having us. Thank you for being here. This is the fifth year of the study that was launched in 2011. Why did you embark on this with the Harvard Business School faculty? So, you know, I became dean in 2010, and we had just come out of the, what you now might think of as the Great Recession, but certainly the financial crisis of 2008. And a lot of people were beginning to ask the question, is this something that's cyclical, or is this something that's structural? Are we going to recover from this? And it had been now 2010, 2011. Usually, uh, recessions in the United States tend to last between 18 and 24 months. This felt like it was much longer. And so people had begun to ask the question, is there something more fundamental that is wrong with America that the financial crisis uh, triggered, but there could be something deeper going on? And that conversation had occurred in so many places that I felt it was really important for us at Harvard Business School to investigate that carefully and deeply. Uh, so it's at, it's at that time that we said, let's really do this big project and make it a multi-year project, get some of our very best colleagues at Harvard Business School. So we got you know, some of the superstars of the school, like Mike Porter and John Rifkin and many other colleagues to join to try and study this problem. It seems that when many are discussing the ailments of today, they do point to the recession and cyclical aspects. Is that incorrect? Have you found that it, it, some of the issues are longer lasting? In fact, what my colleagues have found through the study, and you'll talk to many of them, is that the origins of this really begin in the late 1990s. So for example, we see uh, the peak of employment in the United States uh, peak at 1997, and actually since then has never really recovered. So it's not like you know, employment fell apart after 2008. We know that there's been an anemic recovery. But you can see the origins of then going back all the way to the 1990s. You see the same thing on wages, that there has been stagnating wages for a fairly long period of time. Now, many of those weaknesses became more apparent after 2008. But what we've learned is that there are many structural things that go well beyond and were well before, in some ways, what happened in 2008. Certainly 2008 was a deeply important set of issues that occurred in the financial markets, but there have been weaknesses in America that far predate 2008 and seem more structural in nature. Five years, though, from the initial launch of the study, you have said not much has changed. How can the efforts of so many superstars be put into action at the government and business level? So you know, it's, uh, in some ways it's depressing to think that even though there's a sense of urgency that we all feel that uh, America needs to do better, that so little has really occurred in, in these last five years. On the one hand, we should take some comfort, even at a time when it's easy to get depressed, we should take some comfort that we did recover from the recession. The financial crisis did not end up being a meltdown in the global economy. So the monetary policies that were put in place did end up at least causing and averting the worst of the crisis. But they didn't do much to address these structural issues. I think they may have solved the cyclical issues, but they didn't do much to address the structural issues. What we are finding in this study is that the political gridlock that we all experience in Washington, D.C. right now, particularly at the federal level, does end up being systemically one of the major reasons why we can't seem to address these structural issues, whether it's infrastructure spending, whether it's K-12 through education, whether it's a tax code, whether it's immigration policy, trade policy. These are core things that actually have to get done at the federal level. Uh, our study finds that things that can be done at the state and local level, things that can be done by mayors or by governors, at least we see evidence of different cities and different states trying to do things that address some of these fundamental issues that they have control over. But for the most part, the reason why we haven't seen much progress is the gridlock that we have seen. And it's not like we think that one party is responsible for it. We really do think that the whole political system has created a gridlock that makes it very hard to address these fundamental issues uh, that we really do need to address if we're going to move competitiveness forward. And speaking of competitiveness, that's the focus of the report. When we think of U.S. competitiveness, oftentimes we think of the impact on our own nation. And you've looked at how important it is for us to be competitive also for other nations. Why is our competitiveness and strength also important for other nations like China? So if you think about the U.S. economy, it is the largest economy in the world. And when the U.S. grows at 2%, uh, it means that there is growth opportunity for everybody else who also wants to sell into the U.S. market. America is so deeply intertwined in the global economic system that if America has 
a bad time, then you can literally see it, right? Like the so stock markets over here do badly and the contagion spreads all around the world. But now we are in the same way engaged in the world in, in, in trading flows. And so if you think about China, Chinese exports come to the United States. So if America is not growing, Chinese exports will suffer. Uh, this is true of many, many nations in the world. So America's role and the health of the American economy is, of course, important for all of us here. But it's actually deeply important to the welfare of the world now. It seems, though, that while there's a lot of uncertainty around the le legitimacy, say, of some of China's economic numbers, that they have a lot of faith in their own government, it, it seems more and more that there's more questioning about our track here in the U.S., even from other nations. Is that what you're finding? Yes, you know, it, it used to be the case that uh, I travel all around the world on behalf of Harvard Business School, and, you know, our government and our economic system and our political system used to be the envy of, of the world. And now, you know, you're often asked questions, what's going on? Uh, you know, why, why can't uh, Washington seem to get its act together and get things done? Uh, so there is a, a real sense in which people the admiration for American political system has come into question. I, I hope that that will be short-lived because mm -hmm. this is a great nation and I, I have actually every confidence that in due course of time, through studies like this, uh, by virtue of being a free and open country in which you can actually talk about your problems, uh, in many other places in the world, like China, one of the things you worry about is can people actually freely talk about? Would such a study even be commissioned? Mm -hmm. Could you even imagine people uh, really looking into what are the fundamental issues that ail the nation. So at least our hope is that while at, on the one hand you can feel a little discouraged that in the last five years not much has been done, more fundamentally I still believe that in, in a country in which there's free speech in which you can in fact do the kind of work that we're doing over time, it creates the foundation on which you can respond. Dean Noria, thank you so much for your thoughts. Thank you so much for being with us.